James Arthur, on the eve of the release of your latest album, which we will discuss in a minute. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, mate. Thank you for having me on. I'm really excited about this. We have been absolutely loving your your latest single, which we'll chat about in a moment. Uh, but first, you've been to Kent a few times to play charity football matches. Do you have any memories of any of your time down here, down south in, in Kent at all? Yeah, no, I do. I remember those remember those games um, because I was blowing out my backside for 90 minutes and uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. Did I score that day, do you know? Was... Right, so this was what I was going to say. I was there, 2021, you was down, you was playing a charity football match and I'm pretty sure you scored a back heel penalty in that game. Okay. That was I went to have a look online the other day to find the evidence and I, I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> I Don't, was you gonna... worry. Don't you worry, I'll, I'll forward it to you. Well, do you know where you played that day? Uh, I know it was a th- it was a th- one of those 4G pitches. It was at... Um... Well, let, let me fill the blanks for you, right? It was at the Gadigan Stadium which yep. is home to Maidstone United. Maidstone, Maidstone. Yeah, I've been down there a couple of times, yeah. The cool thing about this is on Saturday, Maidstone are heading to Ipswich to play Ed Sheeran's beloved club in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Oh, is that right? So I thought the best way to start this today would be if you could please, James, just take a moment to just record us a little message for one, our guys at Maidstone. Uh, but also, I think we should aim this a little bit at Ed to just let him know that his team are in for a tough ride. This is a message from Maidstone United. I'm uh, I'm backing you on Saturday against Ipswich, uh, mainly because we want to stick it to Ed Sheeran. He's had too much success in his career and I want to bring him down a peg or two. So come on, I've played it at your stadium a couple of times. I've scored a back heel penalty there. So, you know, if you need me, I'm about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Borough have already beaten this season, so you can do it as well. <laughs> I love that. KM FM. Let's jump straight into it, shall we? Bittersweet Love, your fifth album is out tomorrow. Is the feeling any different sat here today compared to your first, second, third and, and so on? It's Yeah, it's very different. It's very different because um, I think I've got to a place where I really know who I, I am and what I want as an artist. And um, the vision was very clear for this body of work. Uh, and so it feels like the first of a series of projects by me that... Um, that sound like I 100% trust myself. I think, you know, I've been, I've been evolving, you know, I've been progressing and growing as an artist. And um, there's a lot of rubbish stuff I've put out there and, uh, and I've felt like, you know, I've not been super proud of, whereas I feel really proud of this body of work. And so I'm excited to share it with everyone. Are you the type of person that finds it difficult to take pride in your own work? Or have you got to a point now where you can actually start to appreciate things, dissect it and, and channel that energy? I kind of I have this thing where when when the music is just belongs to me and I'm listening to it when no one else has heard it, like I, I feel very differently about it to to then when I know the world's going to hear it, I, I see all the flaws in it and I start to sort of overanalyze it and, and criticize it, which is probably quite normal for, for anyone that makes art and wants to share it with, with the world. But um, yeah, I, it's funny, I don't feel that way about this body of work for the first time. I feel very much like... This, uh, I back myself on it a lot more than ever before. I, I then also find myself that when I go back and listen to bits from me even doing something like this, uh, I then compare myself to others who are out there. People that I love, don't get me wrong. So I was just wondering, is, is there anyone out there now that you're loving, that you're listening to, that you're sort of getting inspiration from? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I think there's there's some great artists out there um, right now, for sure. Um, with, with this music that I just made, I kind of, was was looking back rather than at anything that's going on uh, at present. I was sort of inspired by stuff that I, I listened to growing up, you know, um, like Springsteen and 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 like there's there's even kind of some Stereophonics, Ryan Adams. There's a there's a real Americana um, sort of feel to this this stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of great artists out there right now. I mean, the, it's a good time for artists from the northeast. Sam Fender, I think, is one of the best out there at the moment. I, th- I think he's incredible. Um, I'm I'm really into Phoebe Bridges. I've been listening to her quite a lot. Yeah, there's just so, there's there's so many. Uh, I, I, it's funny I can't think of it, many right now, but yeah. I tell you what, a Sam Fender James Arthur collaboration would be one heck of a tune, wouldn't it? I think it'd be pretty sick. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Let's yeah. champion that. Let's make that happen. Um, I mean, we've had to wait almost three years for this one. Uh, how would you compare Bitter Sweet Love then to uh, to It All Makes Sense in the End? 
Oh, it's it, the polar opposite. So it all makes sense in the end. Was um, was kind of a an experimental lockdown project. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was the drums and everything on that are electronic. It was a very trap heavy record. It's like trap pop rock or something. Uh, whereas this album is like um, I was able to make it in the same way that I, in the way that I would really you know want to make it in terms of like having access to my band and stuff like that. And so. Um, yeah, it's like it's it's much more organic than uh, than the last album. It's if you like me or uh, for those kind of heart wrenching, um, raw acousticy things, then half of the record is like that, and then the other half is like more energetic up tempo stuff and more kind of rock and roll punk leaning. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of everything for everyone, I think. It's interesting that you say there about spending more time with the band because I was saying this to producer Liam before we had this chat. Uh, Bittersweet love sounds like one of those songs that was made sort of for live. That song yeah. is going to be so good live when you hit the road. And I want to talk about you hitting the road later. Uh, but have you done that with the album? I think I read online that there's, is it true there's 16 songs on the album? You've got quite a big track list. Uh, no, there's th there's 13, 13, but I think th th there's like various different incarnations of it right. where they'll, like, I think, I think the digital version, we've added um, a couple of like acoustic versions and things like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, and uh, a, a cover and stuff like that, yeah. So the the yeah, there's various different versions of it. There'll be a deluxe later on, but yeah, it's, it's thir thirteen is like the standard album, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's around about that size. Do, do you do that? Do you microanalyze that? Do you have a look at the story of an album, but then also think about well, what can I do that will definitely sound live? Because you definitely come across to me as someone who loves touring. You you love playing your music live to people. You love that that reaction. So do you yeah. ever plan for that when you go into the writing room or in the studio to to think about well how, how do we just make the the biggest sounding tune live? Yeah, absolutely and and that's that's a big part of this album because I came off tour and started writing it like straight mm -hmm. after a tour so the sort of feeling of being on the road and seeing what works and what doesn't in in different types of venues was very fresh in my mind and Bittersweet Love was one of the first songs that I wrote after that tour. Uh, and then things like Comeback Kid and My Favourite Pill, stuff that um, felt like they were they were made for arenas and stadiums and stuff, which is what we're about to do this year. Uh, so, yeah, that's it, in answer to your question, yeah, it was a very conscious conscious thing. And uh, I'm all about, I don't really, when I'm writing, uh, I, I never really go in the studio to write, like, uh, individual pieces of music. Like, I'm always going in there to embark on, on making a project, an album. It's all about the album for me, even though it's, becoming less and less important to most people. It's, it's, it will always be um, how I kind of work, I think. And so, yeah, very, very, um, very intentional stuff. We, we just spoke about self-critique. Can you give yourself a couple of songs that you, you pat yourself on the back about on this new album? Which are your favourites? Have you got a few? Yeah, I, I would say for me, um, my favourites would be like uh, New Generation and Comeback Kid. They're just like, they've, they've just got influences and in like my kind of taste in them. They're like songs that are, you know, the style of music that I like, I love to play live. Um, and so those those would be my favourite. And in terms of the ballads and stuff, I'd probably say there's a song called From the Jump, uh, which I think is uh, probably the best song in terms of how it's crafted on, on the album. KM FM. This is The Hit List. KMFM. We've spoken about you coming down to Kent. Uh, we've spoken about your new album, which we're all hyped for. Uh, but there's something that you're basically going to be doing from, I, I think it's this weekend, I'm right in saying, through to Christmas. You're on the road for basically the whole of this year. Uh, yeah. Now, you say that you love playing shows, but that's a lot of work, James. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a pretty spicy schedule this <laughs> year, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. I love it. There's nothing better than going out there and connecting with, with all of, all of the fans. And and um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Like I I really feel like I'm gonna get through the whole thing as well without any um, cancellations or anything like that. Because I feel stronger than ever vocally and uh, physically, mentally. I'm in a really good place uh, as far as um, being being prepared for for a heavy touring schedule. And I've got. A, a lot of experience under my belt now, so I kind of know how to last, I think. I, I was listening to an artist in an interview the other day. I, I actually can't remember who it is, but they said, I, I was I was stood there or sat there thinking, 
God, you must be so excited to go on tour. You must just be excited to get on the stage and, and see the plans happen. But then they started talking about the anxiety behind cancelled shows and before they go on the road. It, 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 yeah. is, is that the thing for you? Until you're stood there on the stage, it's sort of not real in some ways. And then that's when the energy comes comes out of you, when you're when you're there and then in front of your adoring fans. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that, that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, it's a really weird one, actually, because... You know, it, it isn't until there's so many emotions that you go through and, and nerves and anxiety and all that kind of stuff until you're abs- actually there and, and you've got that adrenaline dump happening and you connect in with all those people. It um, doesn't feel real. And of course, like you said, c- cancellations are always a possibility. You know, you, we're only human beings at the end of the day. You don't know if your voice is going to go. You can lose your voice very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes it's um, it can be a miserable place being on tour trying to keep keep that um keep you keep yourself healthy in 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 many ways and what about the show so what can fans expect is it is it a mixture of the new stuff and and some of obviously your, your, your classics a few a few covers in there as well what 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 can fans be looking forward to if they're seeing you on the road yeah i think we've got a pretty perfect balance of of stuff in the set now I'm, i'll obviously be playing bits from all five albums uh, all the key songs that i think that people will be wanting to come and hear some of the some of the sort of fan favorite moments that have happened over the years, some of the viral moments with like a thousand years, we've co- we, I covered that and, and it's gone on to do mad things on Spotify and stuff. So yeah, I think we've covered all bases and, uh, and more really. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a great show. And I can't leave this interview and I don't do this to every artist, but I have to say, James Arthur, your fans are the best. <laughs> Like, yeah. genuinely, oh, I, I don't want to say that for you, um, but every time a new James Arthur song is out, we have thousands, thousands of messages from your fans asking us to play your songs. I've never, ever experienced a fan base like your your army, um, and I know loads of them will be listening right now and as excited as all of us about your album coming out in a matter of hours. Have you got a message for those fans before the album drops? I do, yeah. I mean, it, and it's it's kind of much of the same thing that I, that I always say, which is, you know, I I, I really wouldn't be here without um w- without them because they my, my fans are like you said they they're really fanatical and um and uh, they campaign for me in a big way every time I've got music out and um they sort of like you know I think they feel like I should get more support than than I do sometimes and and they really show up for me and, and make me feel that um feel that love and so yeah I, I I'm just yeah this album's for for them you know it's not for for anyone else it's um I'm really excited for them to to have it because I've waited long enough well, look, James, you're a top guy. Thank you so much. I know you've been through a lot in this mad world of the music industry and no one deserves success as much as you, mate. Honestly, sounding great on the new album. I can't wait to hear it in full. Uh, we will keep on playing Bittersweet Love because it is a massive song. So thank you for gracing us with that. Uh, and best of luck with the album. Thank you for your support. Thanks for the opportunity to, to promote my music, man. Thank you very much.